Hi everyone. Welcome to the lost generation outside of the mainstream. My name is William Hooker. I am a musician, poet, and part of this generation of artists. My goal with this podcast, which is being broadcast on its own YouTube channel and my website, williamhooker.com, is to introduce you to many of the musical artists that are outside of the mainstream and have made important artistic contributions to our culture. I have also interviewed producers of the music and many fans and supporters of this work. My guests are sharing what makes this art form unique and significant. I hope these conversations will inspire you to listen to the music, which may change you and the way you view music, which again is outside of the mainstream. Today, I have the honor of interviewing Mikshan Raleigh, multi-instrumentalist, composer, and band leader. I hope to be airing new interviews on the first of each month. We are presenting these interviews and we have so many amazing interviews coming up that you will be hearing in the future. This is The Lost Generation Outside of the Mainstream. This is a story that needs to be told. I'm sitting here with uh, Mix Sean. And uh, basically, just tell me something about, tell us something about yourself, and maybe, you know, uh, four or five sentences about who you are. All right, I was born in the middle of the 20th century, Uh, grew up around Hartford and East Hartford, and mainly on the Connecticut River, and uh, come from a average family, except we're always been, there's always been musicians in my family, and uh, Coming up, I, my biggest influence was probably my brother because I was always listening to him play. And he was always playing all kinds. Of, well, my parents, we played all kinds of music from uh, James Brown through Stravinsky and uh, various tribal musics from around the world. So I always grew up listening to that, so it wasn't even a thing. And my grandma, my mother's mother, started used to always sing... Um, indigenous songs to us and you know we'd just be singing along with her so music was just a very natural thing to me but I never really pursued it I preferred to play baseball go swimming and ride motorcycles till I was about 18 I had a well 17 I had a motorcycle accident then I had to get serious about something so when I turned 18 19 I started playing the saxophone how did you how did you veer toward free music <laughs> Well, I always heard it. I mean, I was listening to free music before I even played when I was a kid. That you know, my brother would he play all kinds of stuff. He'd be playing like really straight ahead stuff, you know, some of the early Cold Train stuff, or you know, um, Cannonball Adderley, you know, Max Rose, different people, and then he'd be playing Ornette. Uh, uh, what's his name? My Cancerian brother. I always love. He passed away. Uh, Oh, anyway, listen to a lot of Sonny Murray, um, uh, just different cats. The ESP disc, we used to play those a lot. That's Albert Island. Albert Island, there you go. I was having a senior moment, don't worry. Yeah, yeah. sorry, Al, I didn't mean that. But. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I would, I would be listening to it any, so, you know, Going from uh, you know, I I never thought there was a difference. I thought it was all the same shit. Yes, yes, so, uh-huh, yeah. You know, so which it is right, exactly. Uh-huh. Yeah, so I and and coming up with music, you know, uh, even jamming like with my brother and later on with other cats, especially here in Connecticut, because Connecticut's interesting because no one really know, but it's very quiet up here. But as you know, people were playing all kinds of shit up here. And we would always go to Boston, New York or Boston, so people would always be coming through. So we were always getting that, but nobody really knew what was happening here until cats started coming up. So my question to you, and you can elaborate on it, but mm-hmm. it's possible. 
What have been some of the challenges that you would cite in terms of your your um, playing this music in this area, which is a little bit outside of the people that play this music in New York City? And um, what have been the basically the challenges of it because the music itself is challenging yes and then when you're in a certain area I would mm -hmm. think separate from all these people that are congested in one place usually mm -hmm. uh, there are other challenges I wanted you to cite yours well the challenge was I never really played that kind of music around here very little most times I was playing it was in New York or New Haven I uh -huh. rarely played it around here uh -huh. most time when I'm playing around here I'm playing straight ahead okay so the the challenges the, the challenges are immense because you start playing what's the famous line they say lay out man lay out play the changes you know yeah. but so I honestly I, I have very little experience playing free music here in in this area in Connecticut a little bit but not much I see well anytime you play in a place like a real art ways I would think that they would would be open yeah that that would be more that would be but I haven't really played it real always that much either I mean I did for a while here and there uh -huh. in the 80s oh the 70s really go back to the 70s huh? uh -huh. 70s 80s yeah but uh, even then most of the time when I was playing that music I was playing it in New York okay so you've been coming back and forth from Hartford to New York. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which I know. Sure, of course. I know, I know that. Right, and even before I was playing music, we used to go back and forth to New York all the time. I've always had relatives on Manhattan. There's always been, you know, it's just... Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. I still have relatives in Manhattan. It's, it's just one of those things. We, we, I've had relatives living in Manhattan before colonial times and, and throughout to the present, so... And you would come in and play? Yeah. That, when was the last time that you played, performed? In remember, New York? I remember you playing with uh, another person that I'm going to be talking to, Callie Fasto. Mm -hmm. uh, and Callie, you know, she's a really good friend. Obviously uh -huh. a beautiful person. I remember that. What yes. were some of the other times that you've done? Oh, play in New York? Well, yeah. we used to play with Rashid Ali a lot. And uh, Don Pullen. And wow. uh, Ronald Shannon Jackson. And, of course, my own group, Afro Algonquin. Your uncle? My own group, Afro Algonquin. Oh, I see. But you mentioned, who's the last person you just mentioned? Uh, Ronald Shannon Jackson. Ronald. Ronald yeah, Shannon. yeah. Vernon Reed was in that group. And right. Bill Gibbs. You were in that group? Yeah. So you were on, you were in, are you on the recording called um, Man Dance? Yes, I'm on Man Dance, oh, Nasty. Oh, excuse me. And um, uh -huh. Street Priest. <laughs> okay, all right then. Mm -hmm. So, so... That gives people uh, a, an overview. Yeah. You know, because uh, that's that's essential. Because a lot of people don't... A lot of people in this culture, they don't even acknowledge that we even exist on right. the planet. So I'm glad that you brought that in because that gives them a, a focal point that they can look at and see right. other things. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think the, really the challenge, and, and really the challenge came to me after I started playing more music in New York and recording and traveling doing those things is where to play the music because it was a, I won't say it's a conflict but it was it was a duality that was coming over me because as I was getting more into just expressing myself at the same time I was getting deeper into uh, indigenous and ancient types of music and really juggling those two like what should you play on stage what shouldn't you play on stage you know what kind of repercussions that might have with people and How do you mean repercussions? Repercussions, like, for, well, yeah. you know, Jim Pepper, actually, when he came back to New York in 81, 82, he came and lived with me for a while. And, you know, we used to sit and talk about some of these things about, you know, the, the bigotry that is just so, so overwhelming in the society because that was right after I had done the album Afro Algonquin and they loved it they're still selling it now I mean it, 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 I need to talk to them about royalties but no they're still selling the album and we, it was a it was it was free but you know it, it still had people who would look straight ahead if they listened to the beginning of the piece they said oh yeah it's straight ahead but then it would just go out so they but people liked it and 
in Germany, it was fine. Europe, yeah, Afro, and they understood what I was talking about, Afro-Indio. Yeah, we get it. In the United States, it was a whole different thing. People were like, oh, it was like, what the hell are you talking? No, this is not black music. We're Indians or, or you know, black people. Oh, no, Indians don't have nothing to do with music. So the bigotry was just too intense. Incredible. Yeah. So, I mean, I came out with, have had, had I named it something else, maybe it would have, you know, they, I wouldn't have had so much controversy, but it started so much controversy that really I and and it just have happened at that time. There was a resurgence in indigenous culture here in Connecticut that was going on, and I just got involved in that. So I went from living in Harlem to living in the wigwam, and just I won't say totally dropped out, but I pretty much dropped out of the scene for wow. a few years. And what year would you say that that, that would be? It was in 1983. So when you and I first met, not not we didn't first meet, but when you came over to our place uh, in in East Hartford on Zion Street, yes, where were yes. you? Where well, were you then? At, in terms of what you this, what you just telling me, I was just getting to the point. Um, I was starting to play locally, but that was more playing straight ahead. But uh -huh. but I was still, of course, listening to the other music and playing. Right. But um, I was just getting to the point where I would start going to New York and hang out. Um, I see. Yeah, what was I wasn't playing it, but I was coming there and hanging. I mean, I almost got to the point like um I forgot what year it was, but I was walking down. I just decided to back in those days, you had twenty dollars, just jump in the car and go to New York. And, yeah. <laughs> right. So it was it was autumn in New York. Yes. <laughs> and I was uh, yes. walking along in the village, and I happened to walk into the middle of a police riot. And they were beating up hippies, and like people were running off. So I just like stood in the corner and just like got in the doorway and just watched everything go on. Yeah. Then after the smoke cleared, I happened to be in front of the village vanguard. No, the village gate. The okay, village, then. Right. The village Thank gate. Yeah. Yep. And um, I said, Charlie Mingus. I said, oh, Charlie Mingus, yeah. So I had, you know, then you could afford to see jazz. I had a couple dollars playing. in my pocket. He was playing. Uh -huh. He was playing. I listened to it. I said, oh, man, it was great. After after it was over, I came up and said, Mingus, man, you're a bad motherfucker. I said, oh, thank you, thank you. I said, you know, but I got some shit you need to hear. I said, really? He said, yeah. You bring your horn tomorrow. Come down. So I said, all right. So I went back, shed a little bit, came back the next night. I just walked down there and, you know, he, they, they told him the, the door and they brought me down there. And he says, yeah, take your horn out, warm it up. So I'm just playing. He says, stop playing. So I'm playing after about like 20 minutes. He says, yeah, I like that. You didn't have to play Nature Boy, but I like that other shit you were playing. But um, you think you could go up on the stage and play for 20 minutes before we play by yourself? I said, yeah. So he said, okay. So he brought me up there and he said, ladies and gentlemen, this is Lee Rozzi from Hartford, Connecticut, going to play some music. So I just started playing. And after I played, people dug it, you know, they applauded. And then I started to get off the stage. He said, no, 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 stay, stay up on stage, man. So I played with him that set, played with him all night. And he says, yeah, man, that was nice. I like that. I mean, if you got eyes, you can be in the band. I said, oh, well, I'm in the middle of my semester in school. He says, well, fuck you then. Oh. Let me tell you. Yeah, oh, really? Yeah, really. Literally. I, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, and he says, and, and then he told me, he says, man, they got you brainwashed in Hartford. You know, you're so smart, you think you're stupid. Let me tell you, he's just running down all this stuff that, you know, I understood some of it as he's telling me, and years later it started to really sink in. And we stayed in touch after that, you know, we would talk periodically, and he passed away not long after that. That is an incredible, that's an incredible story. That's and that's really true. What did he say to you? You what about? You, oh, he you, says, what, yeah. He says, people. He said, you're so smart. They got you thinking you're stupid. And there's a lot of truth to that because the smarter people, that's why people who have high intelligence, they generally are are manipulated or they get paid less or you know, or they become megalomaniacs. Well, usually they don't become. Usually, less intelligent people become. Those are sly people. Oh, <laughs> oh my God! Oh, I understand. Right. I actually scoped it out. I'm, I'm really, I'm really glad. Now I'm going to ask you. Uh, I'm going to throw a name at you. Okay. But as I said, you just tell me about the person's music. Okay. Because I, I, I put together these cards, and I, if you don't know anything about the person, you can say so. And okay. If you know something about the person, you say so. Okay. All right. First person, let's look at. Oh, 
that's good. I can't even read the card. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Cooper Moore. Oh, Cooper Moore. <laughs> yeah, this is actually... Uh, uh, about his music? What is, how, do you, how do you see it? Well, it's funny, because I first met Cooper Moore, like, back in the 70s before... Well, right around the time I was going to New York, I was a lifeguard, and, and at uh, lunchtime, I used to go downtown and start playing my soprano. And I just did it because I liked it, but people started throwing me money, so I, that was even better. I said, oh, yeah, great, so... And one day, this guy comes up, and he's got this instrument, this little vibraphone, uh, like marimba-type instrument he made, and he was playing it. And we just started playing. We were into it. And he came back the next day, and he said, oh, man, this is great. He was playing Emory, it turned out to be, well, you know, Cooper Moore is Emory Smith's uh, brother-in-law. Well, people don't know Emory Smith. Oh, I, the great Emory Smith is like one of our elder statesmen of uh, of jazz here in Hartford. He's great. like one of the cats. Great. Yeah, I want them to know that. Yes, yeah. yes. He's and still playing. He's a wonderful musician. And what happened? What well, happened out of that? Well, what happened out of that? It's like Cooper Moore disappeared after that. I, <laughs> I never saw him after a couple of days. I was mm -hmm. like, wow, man, that was great. I asked Emory about him. So, yeah, no, he's, he's got some other issues to deal with. So, okay. I didn't see him for years and years after that. And then I heard that name, Cooper Moore. I said, Cooper, but he wasn't Cooper Moore then. I even forgot what, what he told me his name was at that Gene time. Gene Ashton. G yeah, right. So, um... I remember 501 Canal Street. Okay. When I moved, when I moved to New York, there oh, was Oh, he was place, around there? 501 Canal Street, and in, that, in, in Canal Street, there was uh, David Ware. Okay. Alan Brockman. Oh, yeah. Ellen Christie. Okay. To, uh, um, Mark Edwards. I'll take a uh, uh, Cooper Moore. Okay. Um, and it was a collective, collective building. Oh. In Al Street. See, okay. That's yeah. So. so All he right. Was there. He was yeah. There. No, Cooper Moore. It's like, I didn't hear him for years, and then uh, I saw him, but it didn't put the two together for a long time. I saw him when you did that thing at, in uh, in at Tools. Wow. Yeah. And I, read, I talked to him, but I don't really, I hadn't put it together. Then last year, last uh, September, I was I went on, uh, went over to Italy with uh, with William Parker and Cooper Moore was on this on the gig. Playing what? Piano. Okay. And what was the difference between this playing piano and this playing the? Uh, it's the uh, same. Marimba type. It's the same. Well, it's what? Well, I'm telling you. Okay, yeah, no. He, he gets those clusters of those sounds, those clusters of sounds happening. He was doing that then, but of course, with the piano, you know, he can ex he can, you know, extemporate a little further out. But he still uh, got that basic thing happening where it's just like he just creates his sound that just moves with how the music moves you know just like a a cloud of sound I hear you that's how I, I explain it and then I was looking at him and all of a sudden started coming back and said you know Cooper we met years ago and then ran it back just oh oh wow really he said yeah he said, you know, I don't even remember it but I believe you I said yeah yeah Emery <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 so um, no I, I love the way he plays he's great that's one person. Let me try another one. Let's see what we got here. Well, that's that's in the music production era. We'll go to that. Matthew Shipp. I don't really know Matthew Shipp. But I've heard his music, but I don't really know him in that one. Okay. But uh, okay. I enjoy his music. All right, then. Okay. Um, Mario Pavone. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right. I, I, I know Mario, but honestly, I've never played with him. Well, based on what you've heard him play. Uh, what I've heard him play? Yeah. Okay. Oh, he's an excellent musician. He's a good musician. Very good musician. He he well, would be in the more right? straight... He would be the more towards straight ahead. And I understand that because most of the time when I play here in Connecticut I do play more straight ahead you know I, I, I kind of allude to the other stuff but I don't really go full out there because I know people here not all people want to hear it so you know it, it affects my livelihood it affects a whole lot of things but the, I found 
I don't try to ram things down people's throat. They, they, cause even playing jazz, I mean, a lot of people don't even want to hear me play jazz. They rather hear me play Indian flute, or listen to me sing traditional music. Yeah, so that's part of the challenge. Exactly. I mean, but the challenge is, it's like I know who hires me or what people ask me to play for what. I mean, I find myself playing in churches more often. It's really funny, but that's how that is. But um. What, what people want to hear that's how I think about what it is they want to hear because I they know I, they tell me what they want to hear and I said okay uh -huh, uh -huh. I can do that Flip Barnes I don't know Cliff Barnes Flip Flip Lewis Barnes Lewis Barnes I'm, trumpet player I don't think I know him you don't know Lewis no um, Butch Morris oh, Butch Morris wow that's going back no He's he's he, he's of our generation. I know. And, yeah. And he passed away. I know. Yes. No, no, it's going. No, I remember Butch well. What yeah. What'd you say? Well, um, his music was more sparse and thoughtful. The way he's played. That's that's the way I think. Like Cooper Morris is like a cloud, dense cloud of music. Butch, he would play. it would be nice, but he'd be more sparse in it than someone like Cooper Moore. So that's how I would describe his music. And I enjoyed playing with him. He's, he's a nice cat. And you played with him, when you played with him, was he playing trumpet or cornet? Yeah, he's playing cornet. And then he went into conduction. Right. Yeah, I hadn't played with him when he was conducting things. This when he was playing, uh, this is back in the 70s. That's right. Those are the, yeah, those are the days when I think a lot of merged out of here. Yeah. Yeah, people were... that. It was really the first big batch of jazz musicians that came out of Connecticut. So, there was always jazz music, but there was a big batch of us that came out of Thoughtful. The time. Yeah, thoughtful and reflective. He, he, he would be like... In the free music, he would be, yes. be more like Miles in, in the way that his approach would be, just more sparse. Uh-huh. What about... What would you say about... All right, then. And because I can remember someone that I felt was really a close, I uh, had a close affinity to as well, uh, Ted Daniel. Oh, Ted Daniel. Yeah, Ted Daniel, he's a good player. Is he still playing? Yes. Oh, right. Yes. I haven't seen him in a long time. Yes. I used to play in his big band over at Ali's Alley. That he had a big band they were playing for a tell while. Tell me about that. Tell me, <laughs> tell, tell me some of the people that were in it as well. Oh, this who is was in it? This is what we need to know. Um, Bayard Lancaster, yes. alto player. Uh, who else? Um, who's that guy? Joe, you played the Joe Rigby. Uh, what's his? The sad tenor player. The phenomenal Joe Rigby. Yeah, Joe Rigby, right. Yeah, I believe he was playing in that band. I remember him from Nova uh, Graves. Oh, shit, Joe Rigby's. I, I love the way, I always loved the way he played. Um, who else? Oh, man. Gee, it was a lot of cats. There's so many cats. I, it just becomes a blank because you're talking like this is like 40 years ago. Come on, now. come on, come on. Let's see who else. I'm just yes. Yeah, let me see who else. Because I hadn't thought about that in a long time. Who, I think Roy Campbell was in it. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. I think. Uh, who else was in it? Yeah, I didn't really know many of the cats because it's funny. He, he put together a, a band of people who played straight ahead and free. Okay. So, you know, from each solo, it would be, it's a hodgepodge, you know, and, and the arrangements were like that. They, they were kind of straight ahead, but they were open-ended so you could, you know, take it out there. You know? Yes, yes. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So that's why that's why the, t Ted Daniels and Ted, he was just a nice cat. I, I enjoy is. his personality. He is. He is. He is. Yeah. Can you remember throughout that period of time uh, a pianist that would have been in that group, or do you remember a pianist? Steve Kuhn, maybe, from that time. Really? Period. Yeah, uh -huh. maybe he might, but I'm not sure he was in that. I hear you. Um, well, and that was the time, of course. Right at time, around the time I was playing in and out with... with uh, Shannon? That was Shannon. It was before Shannon. Uh, Don Pullen. Ah. Yeah, Don Pullen. But well, we'll have to save Don Pullen for another time. Oh yeah, because no, that was. We will, we really yeah, no, because I, I did, I, I did because, go on tour uh, with him and play. He was we great. We really have to. That's one of those people that nobody plays his music, and I, I they uh, can't. I, I no, I don't. I mean, I mean radio. Oh yeah, 
I, I'm really, I'm really, uh, I'm really. Thinking. Even when he was alive, they didn't give him the, the props he deserved. He was one, he was one of the greatest pianists of the 20th century, no doubt. Thank you. Hands down, because I mean, not only was he a great pianist, he was a killing organ player, and he could do the, he could do the pedals too. He was just, he was just bad. <laughs> That's interesting. Oh wow. man, yeah, no, I played with him. Or he was great on organ. Was, what was is it? The your... Lickety Split. We were playing. We've <laughs> been doing a gig with him at the Lickety Split. Bobby Battles on drums and uh, Don pulling Bobby Battle give me yeah. something about him oh I love obviously, those obviously obviously he's, he's he's my age right right now tell me about him tell me about the way he approached tell me about the way he approached percussion the way he uh, from what you can see right here from what I could hear uh huh he was one of those kids like I mentioned Cooper Moore the way he play, he plays a cloud of rhythm because I mean, he was always on the one, but he was just playing all kinds of shit. More, more, something like Alvin Jones, but of course he had his own sound. But you know, that that type of you know, where you just you have all kinds of shit going on. <laughs> oh, that's the way. That's the way you attribute what I'm doing. All kinds of shit going on. With well, all kinds of yeah, all kinds of shit going on, and staying on the one while he's doing all that shit. You know, you could just see, you know. <laughs> The girl who could be dancing, you know. I, I hear you, I hear right. you. Right. Yes, that's what you're supposed to do, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, ultimately, <laughs> that's what all musicians are supposed that's to do. If you can't make people dance, you ain't a right musician right. as far as I'm concerned. Deidre Murray. Deidre Murray. Deidre Cello player? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny. Have I heard her? I, I've heard her play. I've never played with her, but I've talked with her, and, you know. I hear her. So, uh... Yeah, DJ Murray. Really yeah, I, yeah, I haven't really heard uh, enough, but I mean, I know she plays both in and out and classical. I mean, she can play it uh -huh. all. So, uh -huh. you know. Well, speaking of those people, let's say, um, I'm, I'm trying to think. Uh, let's go to Jason Wong. Oh, Jason's nice. I, I've heard him play. I just met him recently. The last He's couple years. Yeah, oh, I know. He's, I okay. know. Yeah, no, I, I like the way he plays. He's uh, his music would be more. Um, I, I haven't heard him play that much. I'd be honest, but I have heard him play. So I mean, it'd be like Deidre Moore. I I've heard about as much as I've heard. Uh, not Deidre Moore. Murray. Deidre Murray. Uh -huh. I've heard him play about as often as her. So, I mean, I liked what I heard, but I wouldn't. I couldn't sit here and you know I, talk I about how you know. I, I got you. I got you. Um. Jerry Hemingway. <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> I'm just laughing. Yes, I'm, I'm uh, Jerry. Why? If you why if you see this, uh, I because <laughs> he's really a great person, and you know, you know, I I wonder about my own sanity sometimes because um, I I have uh, yes. I have uh, a tendency to to really just. Be have my temper go out of control sometimes oh, at please. certain points. Laughing? That's not. Not, not laughing. Oh no! I was laughing. That would be great. Yes, I still. That's. I. I. I mellow towards that. But when I was younger, I. I and I remember snapping at, at Jerry and really being mad at him. And, and I. It's like. It was really stupid. All right, well, we won't talk about that. Yeah. That's no, but what I'm saying, no, but he's, he's playing music. Yes. <laughs> Jerry's. A, Jerry's one of those cats that. Um, He can play anything at any moment. His playing, to me, was kind of like unpredictable. Hmm. You know, you'd be playing and, and he'd, be, he'd be with you, but it was really, the way he approached the music was, was kind of, is more unpredictable to me. Than, than other cats because sometimes he'd be in the funk not too much but most of the time he'd well, straight ahead but then he'd be out but he'd, he'd, he would do it in a way where it would be I guess maybe that literary tradition you know just like would come out with some some shit that you hadn't expected and just oh well, that was different I hear you yeah so that, that was that was my impression well in terms Jimmy. of in terms of percussion did you hear more bottom or did you hear more top oh more top definitely more top I see. You know what I'm saying. I oh mean, yeah, yeah, sure. I'm glad yeah. I, I, Frequencies. You know, I'm glad you, you, you. I'm glad you understand what I'm saying about that because I'm just asking the question about the drummer. In right. The case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that's another producer person you want to know about. 
like that, but it's too much. Um, have you ever worked with um, Andrea Parkins? No, I don't know. Uh, I won't. I won't ask you too many drummers. Oh, those are the cats who always hire me. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> Ellen Christie. I don't know Ellen Christie. Ellen Christie is one of the people I told you that was living at 501 Canal Street. With Google oh Google. well, yeah. But Ellen. She also was. She also was married to Tom Bruno. You know, See, Tom Bruno. No. Well, see, this is the thing. People always ask me if I... I don't really... I'm not a real... I, I have to be honest. I'm not a real sociable person. I, I don't... Oh, okay, then. Okay. So I don't really know a lot of people. They, right. they say, you don't know? I said, no. No, no, I, I understand that. Because that, that's the way I met... Um, I met through Tom Bruno and Ellen Christie. I met Sabir Mateen. Mm-hmm. Let's elaborate on Sabir for a moment. Oh... I love the way he plays because he's one of the few cats, horn players, saxophone players, that can play in and out. And I really appreciate that. I mean, I appreciate cats who play out. I appreciate cats who play in. But cats who can both can just walk through it easy without, you know, no big thing. I love that. And that's what I love about that? his playing. How does he do that? Like, technically speaking. Technically, how yeah, he, yeah. How he yeah, does it. Well, first of all, it's like... <laughs> I think people get too much hung up into style styles. I mean, style people are stylistically challenged. You know, instead of just listening to the music for what it is, they hear a certain style. That's all they want to do. Like most most musicians in general are like locked into a forty year period. You know, that's all they play music from forty years, wherever that point is that they like to be in. Uh-huh. But somebody like Sabir, he can. Um, he can start out, come back in, or start in and come back and go out. And that's, technically speaking, what it boils down technically, you have to practice. That's what it really? boils down. You have really? to practice. I mean, uh-huh. there's no way about it. You, you definitely have to practice. I mean, um, Dexter Gordon told me this one, which was one of the greatest pieces of, of advice I've ever gotten. Because, you know, you, you get, like, so hung up with, oh, you know, I'm not practicing enough or, you know... He just said, practice, once you get to a certain point, of course, when you first start, you're going to practice for hours and hours. Yes. But he says, as you live your life and just be a human being, as long as you practice 20 minutes a day, you're going to be straight. Hmm. I mean, I know it's time, you know, if you've got some kind of gig that requires a lot of, you know, more intensive, of course, you're going to practice more. Yeah. But just in general, 20 minutes a day. And I modified that, whereas, because at this point in my life, i become a multi-instrumentalist but what are your instruments that you're playing right now the main instruments I'm playing the main reed ones I'm, I'm, the main reed ones yes tenor and soprano tenor and soprano yeah uh, and, and flute I, I love to play oh. and mandolin and, and of course I like to play drums too but mandolin flute and and saxophone uh-huh. are the uh-huh. main ones I'm playing right now yes 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 yeah uh-huh. but um back to Sabir yeah back to Sabir yeah um like I said, you have to practice, and it's like he's one of those cats that has a mastery of of straight ahead music and can masterfully play free. That's something that not a lot of people can do, and I, I really appreciate his playing. The all fact right, he can that's do great that. that you said that because all right now during in in this generation we're talking about. Can you give me maybe two or three other people that you know have? Uh, approach music from that vantage point from our generation yeah I have a deep respect for that myself Mm-hmm. I have a very deep respect. Well, probably because our generation is caught in the middle, you know, like beboppers and free cat. Yeah, players, some you know, people they just come at it like they just come at it like this is all I do. Right. Whereas uh, I think our generation, we we heard it all, so it wasn't like it was something odd, you know. It just just like the cats now, a lot of cats can play hip hop and jazz, but not really. Me- yeah, yeah. Like we play. Well, are we talking to, are when we I talking say jazz, like swing? I mean not, not well, swing. more straight yeah. ahead. Yeah, straight they can ahead. play straight ahead and, and and hip hop, but um, yeah, because that that seems to be where they're. But whereas, because even now hip hop, 
I don't care what people say, I'm old school, but the bottom line is we are the grandfathers of the hip hop generation, literally. And all the shit they're playing, although they're doing some great things and doing some things that are innovative, it still all boils down to what we were doing in the late 60s and 70s because nothing has really surpassed that funk, you know? So the... Um, you know, what I was I saying about Sabir? No. Give me two or three. Give me two, two or, or three, three people that you think were uh, can, like can that. do that. Yes, yes. And it, well, it, it, I mentioned the one that Thomas Chapin. He could do that because I went to school with him at heart. He okay. was he was able to do could do both. Okay. Quite quite easily, and he was from here. But uh, somebody who's from here, who plays in and out. They don't have to be from here. Oh, okay. That that you I enjoy. Who well, I like Azar Lawrence. He's he he he's able to go in there and out there. Um, who else? Oh, you know who I loved? Um, Carlos Garnett. He could play in and out. Who else? Um, oh, Sam Rivers. They're of a different generation. Oh, I know, but, I'm, but these are All people right, I listen to. Right but because, like, from our generation... Because you're really telling me people that I'm going to be interviewing. Okay. I'm getting some names from you. Okay. Because I, I'm really interested in following up what you're saying, because mm -hmm. what you're saying is very profound. Oh, it's very yes. profound. It's very profound from the standpoint of, I don't think that people actually know what you're... It, it, right. This is all going to be clarified as mm -hmm. all of the words that you're saying right. are repeated over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because a lot of people they don't really don't even understand what out means. Yeah. They know if they like it or they don't like. It. They know right. no. They they know if they like it or they know if they're repulsed by it. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. They know that. <laughs> yes, yes. 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 Or or they know they know if they. They know if they would pay to see it. Well, you know what I found? You know what one of the reasons why I... Probably one of the reasons I play both in and out besides listening to it is just... I mean, I see it because I work a lot with kids. And with kids, kids will listen to out music. You just have to introduce it in a way that you can't just throw them out there. You kind of, like, take them out. Like when you swim, learn how to swim. You know, you know, When you get out to that deep water, if, if you're not prepared, you know, the broad up to that point, it could be very frightening. Don't so, it. yeah, it <laughs> right. So, you know, uh, yes. it's um, from my generation. Yes. Well, David Murray, of course. David Murray can play in and out. Well, you say, of course. Well, I say David because he's well known. David oh, okay. Well known. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, and he's my generation. I think we're both about the same I age. I think you are too. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm, very, yeah, I'm yeah. sure of that. And uh, let's see. Who else from my generation who played in it? Steve Coleman, could, well, he's a little younger than me, but he could play in and out. Okay. And uh, let's see. Who's that other alto player? Um, Carlos G Garrett? Or? He's played with Miles, and he's one of Jackie's students. I can't think of his name now, but... Yeah, Carlos... Why am I saying Carlos Garrett? Because Garrett is his last name. Yeah, Garrett's his last name, <laughs> right. But it's not Carlos. Uh, you know... African exchange student. Is he an African? No, he's from... No, you know he's African exchange student, that, that piece? I, you know, I'll be honest, I stopped buying records and CDs. Kenny Garrett. Kenny Garrett, yes. Yeah. I, <laughs> when I listen to Kenny, I know Kenny. I, I've heard him play in yeah. and out. Yes, yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. I know Kenny can play in there and out there. All right, but I, uh, I have to be honest with you, just like I'm not a real sociable person, you know, beyond, you know. You're people. very sociable. I can be, but uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have to learn these things. It right. took, took yeah. me a while to learn that. <laughs> That's why I was laughing when I said Jerry Hemming. I hadn't learned to do that yet. But, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> but um,. No, the, um, yeah, Kenny Garrett and I was going to name one other person. But yeah, those are the main cats, I think, from my generation, uh, maybe a little younger, but, you know, around that era that they play in and out. Because there's not a lot of cats who can do that. Mr. Sean, I've known you for a long time. Yes. Thank you for being here. And thank oh. you for surviving. <laughs> well, thank you for surviving because with dinosaurs, not a lot of us left. Thank you for surviving. Yeah, I'm going all the time. Because that's what this is a part of. Most of the people we're talking about, many of them are not here anymore. 
I know. That was, yeah, it's that's true. That's why this is, that's why this is, um, this has to be done. Oh, yeah. No, I was talking with Farone Akhlaf about that. You know, it's like there aren't really a whole lot of cats that are, that are, are playing. But, you know, back to that thing about the um, horn players from, from my generation. Uh-huh. Yeah, they're, they're from from people that I knew, there weren't really a lot of people who do that. But there were more pianists who did, like Anthony Davis could play in and out. Um, I enjoyed the way he played. He is our generation as well. He is, I know. Well, I, I used to play. As a matter of fact, Anthony Davis was very supportive of me, very... Um, he encouraged me very much. Wow, uh huh, uh huh. He's in California now. I he's in Cal, yeah, yeah. He's okay. in California now, but okay. uh, he when the early, when I started playing, because I mean, I was going through a lot of changes, and uh, I was playing the music, but uh, it, it was very desperate time for me. But um, he was one of the cats who, who just uh, you know he said you know you you just got to settle down and play, and you can play. You, a lot of cats tell me I couldn't play, like Mingus is saying. They they got you brainwashed in Hartford because I but, wasn't playing the changes. Well, that's the reason why Jackie told me to leave. Yeah, Jackie McLean. He told me on Pearl Street. Yeah. He said, uh, "William, you got to get out of here." Right. Right. He said it, straight up, straight right. up to me. I mean, they'll swallow I'll, you up. I'll never, I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. And probably this afternoon, I'm gonna go and, and see his wife, Dolly. Oh, I'm okay. I'm gonna go and see them. Uh, but. Um, he 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 took me aside. He took me aside, and I I knew it was coming from a master. Even though he wasn't even appreciated, when he first got here, there was a lot of jealousy and there was a lot yes. of. Yes, he's not playing in tune. Yeah, I know, <laughs> right? Right. You know, you come from New York. You think you're all that. I mean, it right. was crazy. It was crazy. I know. You know, and, and so and and so uh, he and Emory, he and Emory, because um, Emory just knew. He said, uh, "You're not going to get any gigs," and um, because I can I can remember the time when I actually got hit by the free spirit, and mm-hmm. uh, and uh, we'll talk about that after when we finish, but. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that time that that happened. Many people don't know when it happened. I, I was I was conscious when that happened. Hmm. And I said I will never play anybody else's music ever again. Hmm. I will never do that. That's the reason why when you came up to my house, you probably said, what is this person doing? I had that thing on the ceiling. Do you remember that thing I had? It was this great big, great big, like... <laughs> <laughs> it's on Zion Street. Yes, about. Mixer Shot. It was crazy. It was crazy. I almost got us evicted like 15 million times because it was like this big sheet of sound. And I used to play it and I'd you know, just pound on it. And um, and you were one of the people that came up and uh, and Doug Wimbish was the person that came up that went in another direction right. completely. Another oh. direction. Oh, we completely. got great musicians that came up here. You great know, ones. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I don't. All I know is um, when I was approached for this project, I knew that I had to have you in it. I knew that. So thank you so much. Oh, thank, thank you, you for you. for thinking of me. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for tuning in. In months ahead, you will have the opportunity to hear from many more lost generation artists and supporters. The audio only version is available wherever you get your podcast. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to hear upcoming episodes.